before we get going, you in there. So I need you to do something for me. First, get get out of full screen. All right. You see down there the the subscribe. I want you to click that. All right. Good. And then right next to it, there's a bell. You see the options? You press the bell. Press the bell. Okay. Pick all. You got it. Good. All right. Let's go full screen again. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode. So, right now, I'm getting into removing the Mountain uprated diverter valve. Um, I've already figured out what the size of the Allen key bolts are. They are a H5 for, you know I mean, if you have a hex kit. If you do not have a hex kit, uh, get one. So immediately, um, so you want to make sure that this seats in all the way, which I'm about to do right now. And yes, it does. All right. Cool. So now that I know that seats in all the way, I'm going to get a set of uh, long reach pliers. I'm going to remove this, uh, this hose with this clip on it and get it out the way. off flip it around and then gently walk it right off so it gives me the flexibility to get this bad boy in if you are on your back as I am right now Viewability is limited, so just be careful. Make sure you can feel that this is all the way in, especially for the upper bolt. Also, a word of advice, if, it, if it's not common sense already, make sure you let the car cool down if you've driven it, because your hand is right by the uh, charge side of the turbo, and you're right by the uh, steering rack, you know, by a couple things that get hot, the PTU, so, you know, yeah. Sometimes people have to be told these things. I personally don't know why. Alright, so I'm about to put the um, uh, Turbo Smart in. A reference point is built onto this uh, diverter blow valve. So if you can, I'm not sure how well you can see, but right up here on the very top, there is a flush part where the other corners are rounded off. That part, if you don't get it lined up, it will not go on. So it basically makes it almost impossible to put it on the wrong way. try and get this the first time that freaking hose out the way and uh, 
Yes, the flush part will be facing up and to the right. So now, here comes the tough part of getting at least one of these bolts started to hold everything else in place. The new bolts are the same. The new bolts that came that came with the shorty are exactly the same that the Mountain uses. So, user's choice if you want to reuse the hardware or if you want to go with the brand new stuff. And they are both H5. All right, everybody, there we go. The Turbo Smart Compact Dual Action Blow Off Diverter Valve is installed. I'm not going to lie. It's a little bit of a bitch when you're on your back in the garage, but it's not terrible. Um, probably about 10 to 15 minutes it took me just making sure that I was careful not to strip any of the bolts. Looks good. So, next thing to do is start it up and see how she sounds. So when I pulled this out, immediately <laughs> these gaskets both came off. So they weren't very well seated in there, probably due to vacuum pressure or whatever. But this is this unit is still in good shape. Probably wasn't in there for more than a couple of thousand miles. Um, as you can see, it has the dual port windows, one here, one here, that fully recirculate into the uh into the system so and then if i press on this it's definitely offering much better resistance but i would say it's probably it's doing its job but it probably could be a little bit stronger from from what i was told about this from what I've experienced and read. Yeah, me sorry about the shitty lighting, but what I'm about to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to rev the car up. It's already warmed up and ready to go, so I'm going to see how it sounds, see if I need to make any adjustments to it. Um, I can't really tell. <laughs> you can definitely hear something that you can hear the blow valve, but right now the car is so loud that you can't you can't hear the distinctive whoosh sound coming out. I hear it a little bit because I know what the car is supposed to sound like, but in the garage I'm not gonna notice. As you guys remember, this has a full three inch uh, uh, exhaust with a catalytic delete. So the burbles and the cracks and the pops kind of are overshadowing the sound of the blow valve. But I am hearing a bit of a whoosh coming out. So it is working. Uh, I may need to loosen it up, but I don't think I'm going to. I kind of like where it is because once you start applying a load to the car, you're probably going to get a much better sound and response from it. So I'm probably going to have to do a ride test in order to figure it out. But today is not that day. So I wanted to just show you guys this real quick. Um, here is your PTU unit. You see the, the, the pressure lines right here. So this is your PTU unit. unit is directly behind your oil pan. So oil pan, here's your, um, here's your feed line going to 
the intercooler, and then right up behind it, connected to your passenger side axle shaft, is the PTU. So you have a T50 Torx, okay, that goes right in there. So this is your drain, and then right above it, right behind, is your uh, fill, okay? So you don't have to take this pipe off. I mean, you can if you want to, but there's a pump that I'll show you in a little bit that you can use to run a hose from like maybe over here and extend it. And then you use a pump handle in order to fill the fluid. And it works just like your diff. Uh, it's about, I believe, one quart of fluid. And then you pump it until it starts leaking out. Um, Ford suggests that you change this every 30,000 miles. So I'm not going to do it right now because the car is hot. Obviously, you know, you saw I was running it to demonstrate the difference in the blow valve. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so that and your um, differential, same thing. So T50s. Uh, drain and then T50 fill okay and then each gets one quart this is uh, 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 I believe the it's 70 I think it's 85 I'll I'll double check I have everything that that I need so I'll double check the fluids on this and I'll double check the fluid for the rear diff but they're the same thing and then when you're done you torque these down to uh, I believe it's 33 foot-pounds once again, I will double check that for you. All right, guys. So as you see here, I have all the fluids that you're going to need. So starting off left to right, we have the transmission fluid. It is dual clutch transmission fluid. Uh, the most common one is Motul. Um, I've seen some people use Liquid Molly. Um, really, as long as it's uh, dual clutch transmission fluid, you can't go wrong. Obviously, the better the quality, the longer it'll last on, on top of the way you're driving the car. So that's dealer's choice. You're going to need two quarts of that. For that, it is a, um, I believe, I believe it's a T40 Torx bit on the driver's side of the car. Take off the driver's side wheel. You have the upper and lower, uh, drain plug. I will attach some pictures right behind this so you guys can see what I'm talking about. As I mentioned before, the car is hot and it's freezing today, so I'm not I'm not staying in this garage longer than what I have to. So the next thing is going to be your PTU fluid, which is a 75 W140 mix. Again, I got the Motul, some people get AMS oil, you know, again, Dealer's choice doesn't really matter. Um, get whatever fits your budget or whatever color bottle you like, you know, whatever. And then last but not well, not you no know, last but not least for the fluids anyway. Here is your rear differential unit, aka the rear drive unit, 7585 oil. Uh, this is a red line synthetic oil. Again, some people get AMS oil. All depends on, you know, your preference. This is what I was able to find at the price that I wanted. I ordered all three of these off of eBay, which I will attach the links down to. I spent roughly about $70 for the fluids. And then the most important part, which kind of makes doing these fluids a pain in the ass, is this bad boy right here. Fluid lubrication pump. So this cost me about $12, $13. And as you can tell, this um, will thread. So this got the pump that goes down. You have some straws here for different lengths of bottle. And then, um, so you have one part that threads onto where the cap would be. And then you have another portion that um, loosens it up. Or even if you need to swap it out, you can disconnect this whole portion, take it off, put the right size cap on. So for this one, the cap is going to be a bit smaller. So I may have to either A, hold it on and pump at the same time, or if it'll work, use the smaller of the two caps in order to thread it on and pump it back into the unit. 
you don't really have a clear line of sight to dump these back in to get a funnel or any other type of uh, contraptions that I've seen. Uh, for the Jetta, I used a hose. I used this when I did the uh, transmission fluid. So I was able to line it up from the top of the engine bay and then run this piece right down into the refill port. I don't have that kind of clearance on the RS, but I keep it around for all the vehicles that might. So, so again, I will put all of these down in the description so that you guys can get your setup. Um, again, it's dealer's choice. There are many companies that sell the stuff, some cheaper, some more expensive. Uh, I did see one kit so uh, that comes with kind of like a little twin wedge system. So you see right there, this one has one clip that kind of helps keep it from backing out. There's another one that had two clips that extended all the way out and you were able to pinch it in order to pull it out so you don't have to worry about holding it in place. But this is a nifty little system and um, this is what you're gonna need in order to do your fluids on your Ford Focus RS. So I hope this helped you out. Comment, like, subscribe. Let us let me know what you think. And as always, race daily.